Hey guys, in this video we're coming to you from the Jarrah Mary Forests of Southwest Western Australia. We're going to look at calculating the normalised difference vegetation index using QGIS 3.4. For this analysis, we need the latest version of QGIS. We're going to grab some satellite imagery from Sentinel-2 using the Earth Explorer website. The only tool we really need is the raster calculator, and we'll just get some imagery or base map to illustrate our final product. NDVI, it's an indicator for green vegetation, um, which we extract from the red and near-infrared bands of imagery. It quantifies vegetation by measuring the difference between uh, near infrared, which vegetation reflects, and red light, which vegetation absorbs. And the resulting index we'll get will run from minus one, low, to plus one, high vegetation. So lots of theory available online about NDVI, so we won't go into too much detail. But two things I'll draw your eye to is the equation itself, very simple, near infrared minus red divided by near infrared plus red. And some of the limitations around using this analysis, make sure you read through those as a caveat for your own work. The data we're going to get is from the Sentinel-2 satellite. We're going to use the Earth Explorer website for this tutorial. It's run by the European Space Agency and it's multispectral, meaning we get 13 bands. The temporal resolution is about one every five days. We'll get a tile image and the resolution is 10 meters per pixel. The tiles we download, they're about 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers, and a full tile is quite a large file of about 760 megabytes, so it does take a while to download. The steps are very straightforward for NDVI. Once you've selected your study area, you're gonna get your Sentinel-2 band imagery and plug in band four red, then plug in band eight near infrared, and using the NDVI calculation in raster calculator, you're going to get uh, a grayscale image. And then you're going to colorize it with a color ramp to illustrate your findings. Let's start by getting some Sentinel-2 imagery from Earth Explorer. First thing, if you haven't already registered, you can do so here. Or you can log in, which we will do. Once you're in, you want to just pan to the area you're interested in. We want to look at this uh, area of southwest Western Australia. Lots of forestry and other agricultural regions down here. Use the map to select your coordinates. One, two, three, four. And let's set a date range of 2018, July 1st. 2018 July we'll go for July 11th that gives us a 10 day period as we know the satellite passes at least every five once every five days so we should at least get one image out of that data sets select our sentinel 2 okay and additional criteria here we can enter a tile number to refine our search so if we go into Google uh, QGIS we've got a layer here with the all the, the world tiles for sentinel 2 imagery and we're going to look at 50 HMH and use that as our search criteria here. Make sure you use capital letters, otherwise it won't work. Cloud cover, you can select the maximum amount of cloud you're happy to work with. We're going to set it at all. And results. So we can see we've got four, five tiles here that have come up. The first one and the third one and the last one look like they've actually been cut off. So it's probably an adjoining tile. The second one looks good. And the fourth one looks a bit, looks good, but looks a bit funky. So if we look at the metadata, we can see that the cloud cover for this one is 60%. So that's no good for NDVI. Look at the footprint. And this is our tile that we're interested in. So the metadata for this tile, the cloud cover is zero. So that's good for us. Click download and select L1C tile. We've already downloaded it, so we can go straight into QGIS. So find where you've where your tile is downloaded and extract the zip file. We'll go to granule. 
and in this file in this file name the, the information is the tile number and the dates that you selected so go to image data and now we can see all 14 of our uh, multispectral bands that sentinel2 provides so if we go back to our ndvi calculation it's near infrared minus red so those are the two bands we're interested in and look at the table of spectral bands here we can see that band 4 is red band 8 is near infrared so let's just use those two bands drop 4 into QGIS and drop 8 and before we go any further let's just add some extra information to the file name just to make things a little bit clearer near infrared rename layer red I'm going to collapse those so if we zoom to the layer, we can see that our tile is indeed 100, uh, 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers. And if we want to look at the resolution, zoom right in, use your raster tools just to highlight those pixels. And each pixel is about 10 meters across, so that's perfect. Zoom out to layer, set that to extent. So the next step is to use the raster calculator and very easily, and we can go back here, so near infrared minus red divided by near infrared plus red. So the first thing I usually do is set up the brackets and the divider. So you have to make sure that this goes inside brackets near infrared minus red near infrared plus red. So specify where you want it to be saved. We're going to use the date and the tile number as well, just to, just to give us some more information. Yes. Run it. So again, it's a very high resolution tile, lots of information, lots of data and lots of pixels. So give it time to calculate. Great. And then there's our NDVI layer. And as we can see, the range goes from minus 0 0.4 to 1. So it falls within the expect expected index that we calculated so double click that and we want to just add a pseudo color so I've picked a color ramp that goes from red to green with 10 different breaks you can pick whatever whatever type of ramp you want but I think green is uh, pretty much self-explanatory set your min to one and your max to one this makes the um, the output comparable if you do imagery at a different time of year in a different area at the very least, you can compare the colors of that imagery. If you don't, otherwise, it's uh, completely two different data extents. Everything else is good. Apply. And there's our color ramp. So we want to look and see some of the forestry and some of the interface with the mine sites that we have in, s in southwest and western Australia. So in this area, we can actually see where we've got... Um, a mine site and some water areas. So the NDVI actu is actually giving us a really good indication of where the source of water is in this area. Surrounding the mine site, there's some forestry areas around it. And if we look at the NDVI, we can see some faint lines running parallel to each other. What I would imagine is uh, that's a fire break that they've put in just to give the mine a, a le level of protection in case of bushfire. If we scroll around, we can see some of the agricultural areas that have been developed and very uh, much higher NDVI based on the color. So if we make sure the NDVI layer is highlighted here and get or identify features, we can actually get values. So 0 0.74, that's quite high compared with here, the water, minus 0 0.4. We can see what's probably dams on someone's land. So if we look at the satellite imagery, you can see this farmer has a dam built into his land. And you can also see the tracks, the roadways around his farmyard. So the 10 meter resolution might just not be good enough to pick those out too well, but for larger scale investigations, it's perfect. And that's really it. That's how we calculate NDVI in QGIS with free Sentinel-2 imagery.